Imagine, you're standing at the edge of the forest. You look across the way, into a field. You can't help but to marvel at the different habitats. How they could be vastly different from another. How the organisms are vastly different from another. Now I want you to imagine you're a plant living on this forest edge. That if as a seed you had ended up in the forest, you would have to deal with low light conditions your entire life. But if you had ended up in the field, you would have to deal with the full sun conditions your entire life. Now, which conditions would you think is most optimal for growth? Well, that's dependent on the species you're looking at. T uh, today, I want to talk about how plants handle this variation of light within and between species. In my lab, we study milkweed, genus Asclepius, um, to understand how variations of light affect plants. The milkweed genus has 140 species that all have evolved to live in different habitats. For example, plants that live in the forest only receive 6% of sunlight than those of the open field. Within milkweeds, there are species that have evolved to thrive within both habitats. For my talk today, I will be discussing these four species, two of which have adapted to be adapted to be sun-loving, oh, and two in which have adapted to be shade-tolerant. Interestingly enough though, although these species differ in an extremely important resource, sunlight, they are referred to as sister species. That although the specialization in light quantity, uh, they're vastly, they're, very, they're closely related in lineage. But a consequence for the specialization is that species can struggle to adapt to suboptimal conditions. Uh, for instance, the typical response for sun-loving species to grow in shade is to increase their height to uh, maximize light capture by expanding their leaves. But they also face another issue in which they don't get as much sunlight as they normally do. That means that we have um, to produce thinner leaves and the, thicker, the stems aren't as thick to allocate for the resource. Whereas shade-tolerant species in the sun have to maintain a certain height because they have enough of the sunlight, excess sunlight actually. Uh, they produce additional stems to create self-shading and uh, produce the same or smaller leaves and thickness of them. Although, okay, the ability to combat or to combat these uh, stresses and to change morphologically is plant plasticity and it refers to a plant's ability to adapt and cope with the stresses of the environment. Plant plasticity is a key concept today I will be talking about. Uh, these changes can occur in a plant's lifetime rather than shade tolerance and sun-loving species occurs within generations of, through evolution. Specifically, I will be talking about adaptations of milkweeds and how they've grown in sun-loving or in full, sea, full, full sun fields or shaded forest. I had originally hypothesized in which stays consistent with the typical responses previously stated that sun-loving species will be taller, have larger leaves and longer internode distances when grown in neighborhood or shaded environments. Secondly, shade tolerant species will branch more frequently and reduce height as well as probably produce a compound to fight off this excess heat like anthocyanins. That being said, the first way we tested this is through a field experiment. Displayed above is a Google image of our experimental design. We uh, created nine plots, three in the forest and six within the field. And further, these six were divided into th three subsets. Three with um, vegetation still kept, and, vegetation, and then three with vegetation uh, mowed, clipped to the ground. This allowed uh, v different variations of light. The forest plots had little sunlight, you know, 6% is what I stated before. Whereas the control or the vegetation kept had uh, more sunlight, and then when the clipped vegetation or the neighboring removal had the most sunlight. Uh, this is an image of the, one of the plots in the forest, and this is an image of another plot in the full sun, the, the neighbor removal plot. Okay, so what did we do? We, we looked at morphology of plants. We uh, measured height, 
internode distance, which is the, diff which is the um, distance between true leaves. And we checked leaf size and other morphological things like branch and flower, branching and flowering. In each plot, we had 25 plants of each four of the four species, uh, totaling of 225 plants. Through these surveys, we found that sun loving species tend to have taller, longer internal distances when grown in shaded conditions, consistent of the previous shaded avoidance response. Here is the height of one survey, although we see significant um, increase within forests, which we want to see in uh, the sun loving species incarnata. Soraika had a, uh, a treatment in this particular that did not uh, be, that was not significant. And we see this in later surveys though. But we look at internal distance and regardless of height increase, we always see that the, incre the increasement of shade or decreasement of sun, we see that internal distances is always increasing within shade of both sun loving species. In comparison, the shade-loving species Perennis had a very different response in phenotyp phenotype. Uh, here's the one in the shade, and here's the one in the uh, full sun. It increased branching and flowering. We see that branching, again, a pattern where the most sun to the least sun, uh, th there had been more branching with, with the more sun that was uh, there. Secondly, flowering. We had, not, we had not seen any flowering within the forest plots, but only in the plots where the sun was shining. And another thing that uh, we saw but we couldn't measure was anthocyanin production. Uh, the plant here is obviously more red than this uh, perennis over here, and it's something that our, our lab will later look into. So now, field exper uh, greenhouse experiment. In this experiment, we tried to follow similar structure and change the shade or change the sun influx. Uh, we, we used a black filter as, uh, to reduce the light by 50%, a green filter to reduce to the same amount of light, but to shift the far red to red ratio to mimic the presence of neighbors. Um, and then we had a clear filter with no alterations, like as a control. Uh, there's something uh, important to to talk about that this has only reduced the percentage by 50%, whereas in the field, we see 95% decrease. So that means that we have a much more muted response in this particular um, experiment. So here is a, a small window of the experiment. Each plant has a tube that uh, consists of a filter, and then they are in four inch pots. So sun-loving species, how did they uh, react? Well, we see that uh, Incarnata's uh, height is a little wonky, but that's because uh, this ex particular, uh, particular survey had, uh, Incarnata is usually a species that grows very fast in the beginning weeks. Uh, so it, it did not show too much of a difference in the beginning of this survey. Whereas Soraika, we see a significant increase in the neighbor shade, the most shade. So we see that, uh, that height increase for uh, optimal sunlight. Uh, and then we look at the internal distance again. And same thing, we see that there's an increase with more shade, that these species want to increase their light capture by over, over elongating their stems to try to compete with the neighbors. Now, in this ex particular experiment, we had a much more controlled setting, and we were able to uh, grab a, a leaf tissue. So with that being said, we, used, uh, we, we measured their dry mass and wet mass to calculate uh, leaf thickness. And as a result, we see that um, uh, when put in shade, every species had decreased their th thickness, um, which is a common response we see that would happen in the shade. So in conclusion, we see that sun-loving species exhibit a, a strong shade advance, height increase in stem elongation, thinner leaves as well. And then we see shade tolerant species do something a little different. So they maintain height, branch more frequently, and produce compounds to fight the excess light. And I think
with acknowledgments, I would like to thank Tyler Coverdale, my mentor, Anurag, um, Amy, I don't know if she's here, but she's not, okay. Uh, and then Chelsea and Elise for hanging out with me in the lab while we were doing all the work. <laughs> and Ron, and BTI, and Cornell, thank you. <laughs> Any questions, comments, concerns? Yes, Marty. So I was wondering, in your pink test experiment, you have the three different treatment groups, um, and you said that um, when you had your neutral shade and then you had your, um, your green shade. Um, I was wondering, um, I guess, why, why did you decide to use the neutral shade? Because I know that in, um, when plants are shaded by other Um, so the, the, the clear one was basically used as a control. We wanted to see how a plant grew regardless of any treatment. And then we just increased shade within a black filter and we, we used the green one because we wanted to see if plants would react to that far red to red ratio because there's a competition, uh, it, it stimulates competition or neighboring plots. So we wanted to see if that also increased the, the, the height of a plant. Okay. Which one of the plants were most, most plastic? Most plastic? Um, I would say Incarnata. Yeah, Incarnata. The sun loving species because it, 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 grew, it grew tall and uh, internal distances were extremely long. So, in your filter experiments, um, different filters could also affect temperature that the plant is experiencing. Did you measure the temperature and how would that affect the, the plant? Um, we didn't measure the temperature. I would have thought the, hope, I mean, I know there's this, this um, there was a study, this, there's this study has been done before and that it's, it was said that leaving the top of the, the, the filter open uh, allows for gas exchange and heat regulation, but um, I'm unsure if affected it as much as I, you, uh, you would think. I'm not sure though. Any other questions? She has one. Uh, a question here. So you were focused on height, but are there any other factors that you think are important with plants adapting to climate change? Uh, we, uh, leaf size. I mean, I told you like, uh, they expand their leaves or keep them small depending on how much sunlight there is and if they want more sunlight. So again, we would see sun-loving species expand their leaves, whereas uh, shade-tolerant species wouldn't need that because they, they have a mechanism in which they only need a certain amount of light to keep. Were you looking at where you could see if there were seeds? Excuse me? Um, currently, the, the perennis, like they were flowering. Um, at the moment, they're still flowering, so we're not sure. Uh, milkweed is a perennial plant, so it takes a while for them to create seeds. But no, we haven't seen any of them seed. Okay. 